A year ago, I built a monster video editing PC, and today I'm going to tell you how it's holding up, what I missed from switching to Mac, and if you stay tuned till the end, I'm gonna tell you what I would change if I built this exact PC today. Internet, welcome back. Robert Teagarden here, helping you create your own path. Today, we're looking at my video editing PC a year later, telling you all the things that I've updated, changed, et cetera. If you're new here, I put out content on a weekly basis on the business of being a creative and filmmaking tips and tutorials. So if you like what you see here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for post notifications. Super duper helps this channel, super duper. Who says something like this? Damn it. Last year I made the switch from Mac into a video editing PC that I built myself. I documented the process in this video up here and uh, a lot of you guys really enjoy that video. I'm really happy and grateful for that. And throughout the process, you guys have been asking a bunch of different questions regarding benchmarking, can it handle 8K video, all these different types of things. So today what I wanted to do is break this stuff down, talk to you about what I've upgraded over the last year, uh, what I really miss switching from a Mac environment, um, and then actually discussing if I would build this thing today, what I would change and how much this build would cost. I wanna first start with the upgrades I've made to this machine, both aesthetically and performance. Performance wise, both, both aesthetic, both. <laughs> it's the TH to the ASTH, both aesthetically, both aesthetically and performance wise. And then talk to you about how it performs both the benchmarks and in real time. Let's get started with some upgrades. When I first built this PC, the only thing I had inside was 256 gigs of M2 storage. The reason being is that I'm constantly working off of external hard drives. I've got three connected to my machine right now. And while I figured that my M2 would just run programs, I quickly realized that I needed some extra internal storage. I put a terabyte of Samsung's Evo 890 inside that's running off of a SATA cable, uh, and I haven't really had any issues ever since then. When I first built this PC, what I had is 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM at 3,200 megs. I've doubled that now at this point um, and made it look a little bit cooler with some RGB cores here, but 64 gigs of RAM is where I sit right now. I didn't actually have a problem RAM wise. Um, things actually obviously run a lot faster with the RAM that I have in there now, but you could get by with the 32 gigs of RAM that I have on this machine just fine. I just do a lot of work in After Effects now and it helps a lot with my rendering process to have that extra capability. So all four DIMM slots are filled, 64 gigs of RAM are in the machine. I added quite a bit of RGB lighting to this thing, both internally and behind the case itself. And I also changed all of the cabling out to be this cool white braided cabling. I just really like the look of this. It seems very clean to me. And since I had that monochromatic look anyway, uh, this is something that just kind of made me feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside. And it makes my cable management game look hella strong. One of the most recent upgrades I did is put an Elgato cam link in this thing as well, the 1080 60p version. As some of you might know, I'm a part-time professor and everything due to COVID has gone online um, at least until the end of this year. I'm doing a ton of live streams here on the channel as well. If you haven't, you should definitely check those things out. And then I do a bunch of Zoom meetings. And so I'm a videographer by trade. I wanted my setup to look super clean. So what you're seeing right now is what the rest of my students see. All of my live streams are looking the exact same way. And so what I did is set up a, a whole crazy rig that uh, I'm gonna, I did an entire different video on my YouTube setup that you should check out. And then I I stream that all through this Elgato cam link um, internally. I don't run the little uh, thing. You, you guys saw the B-roll. So, so that's it. So that's the majority of the upgrades that I put in so far. I'm still really happy with how this thing is going. The thing that also adds to my contentness is that Adobe did a full refresh on the programs that they're doing, especially for Premiere and after Effects, that's what I was looking for. Um, and so they're much more seamless in terms of the way that they function and are a lot faster as well. Now keep in mind when you're editing inside of Premiere, most of the processing power is being taken up by your CPU and your RAM. And your GPU is handling things like render times and your motion graphics stuff like After Effects. So when I look at my workflow, which is stuff that's primarily shot in 4K, uh, and the recent updates that have been made via the Adobe Suite, uh, this system performs really well for me and, and the render times and the export times are actually pretty good. Now let's take a look at this video right here. It's a seven and a half minute video. It's shot entirely in 4K, including the screen captures. And I was able to render that timeline in four minutes and 19 seconds. Now, if I export inside of Premiere Pro using the CPU processor, it came in in just under 13 seconds, which is pretty good. 
Let's talk about some benchmarking numbers real quick. I ran a test off of Geekbench 5, and while I'm not really too concerned with what the benchmarking numbers look like, real life performance is definitely something that I value more. I ran a CPU benchmark and a computing benchmark, and I know that there were several people that were asking about those numbers, so here you go. Now let's talk about some things that I miss moving from a Mac environment into a PC environment. Now, I just want to be very clear about this. I haven't switched from Mac to PC. I have a dedicated video editing PC and I still use a bunch of Mac products for other things. So, you know, I've got a MacBook Pro, I've got an iMac, I've got my iPhone, I've got all these different things. And so the things that I miss a lot working in this workflow are AirDrop and iMessage. Now I've tried all the different Bluetooth dropping things and Snapdrop and blah, 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 blah. None of them work as seamlessly as AirDrop does. And it's really kind of a pain because my workflow at this point is just downloading and uploading things to Dropbox via you know, my phone or my computer. Um, and then, you know, doing the inverse on whatever platform I need it for. And I know that these are first world problems and it's things I shouldn't be complaining about, but it's definitely a lot easier to just hit that button and have them transfer back and forth and land in the same place that I need them to land in every single time. The other thing is that one of my primary, probably the primary method of communication I have with clients is through iMessage. Um, and so having to have a dedicated machine like on my desktop, um, or on my phone texting back and forth where before I used to just be able to alt tab and move back and forth. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not the end of the world, but I definitely wish I could have that. Maybe I make this a Ryzentosh. Hmm. Now, if I were to build this PC today, what would it actually cost? Now, the things I want you to keep in mind are that this is still a COVID-19 environment and prices, especially from the PC building game, are definitely inflated. I spec out everything I've done, including recent updates on PC part picker, and it comes in at 1500 bucks. I just want to clarify that I am a professional freelance editor and videographer, and I make my living not through YouTube videos, but through actual client work where I do this every single day. And so have Having something like this is really, truly important to me. But I am also a budget conscious shopper and, and I don't put anything on credit. I pay 100% cash for all of the gear that I have acquired at this point. So why am I saying all this? Would I love to have a new Mac Pro and, and have all the specs and the elegant design that it's in? Of course I would. I, I still think that Mac is a much better operating system even though Windows has improved. But the Mac workflow, especially where creatives are concerned, is something that Apple has given a lot of thought to over the last two decades. and they continue to do so. Windows is now just kind of starting to catch up into that environment. With that being said though, I'm really, really happy with my purchase and what I've done with this machine, and I definitely won't be switching back anytime soon. Now over the last couple of weeks, if you've been paying attention to the camera ethos, you've got announcements from Canon on the R6 and the R5, which has 8K raw video. And you also have the rumor mill spinning crazy with the Sony a7S III set to be announced very soon. And it's thought that they're going to have something similar in terms of resolution. Now those two cameras are fantastic and I'm really excited to get my hands on them and play around. But the other thing that we're seeing is that the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and 6K are still available. You're having the Z Cam that has 6K already native. There's a bunch of high resolution cameras that are there. And while I don't necessarily see a huge need for that in a workflow. Currently, I definitely don't want to be left behind in specs. So if I built this PC again today, what would I change here? The two things that I would upgrade for this particular system, and that is the Ryzen 12 core processor with 24 threads. And unfortunately, from that standpoint, I'd probably have to get a new motherboard in order to service that. I really do like the Asus Prime line, the Prime Pro line. So I'd probably go with like a 570, 590 MOBO in that regard. Garb. And then if I had to, I would buy a new GPU, but I think mine would still crank along. If I did buy a new GPU, it'd be something that's like preposterously priced, you know, in the neighborhood of about, you know, a thousand to twelve hundred bucks. So I'm going to stick with what I have from a GPU standpoint, but I'm eyeing and have my finger on the trigger in terms of buying that new 12 core Ryzen processor that there is. With that being said, this is Robert T. Garden with another video in the can. If you like the video, please like the damn video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, ring the bell for post notifications and ladies and germs. I will see you guys next week in the next video. Peace. Thank you.